this video is going to be a little bit raw. I know this is like a YouTube trend right now to like have a whiteboard up and make raw videos and stuff. But I just got off a sales call and I thought I'm going to make a YouTube video about this idea that I had because a prospect that I had gave me a, a good idea. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it. My name is Ben. I help agency owners by documenting basically everything that I learn and I put it on this YouTube channel. That helps me to make you know, like multi six figures per year. Anyway, besides the point, people, when they are first starting a business, first starting an online service, right, whether this is SMA, dropshipping, whatever it may be, they have this weird idea, which I guess isn't weird to most people, but it is when you actually understand business a little bit more, which, you know, I consider that to be myself. If you are creating a service, you need to, first of all, understand if someone is actually willing to buy that. Now, there's stories that you hear from maybe your favorite type of online creators and stuff like that where they've been spending a lot of time creating something and they realize that no one actually wants it and they had to reverse that whole thing okay and you're obviously not going to go down that path right you're not going to spend 12 months creating this specific product put all this money and time and resources into that and then have that crash right where because we're not really selling physical products a lot of you are going to be selling online services and you can basically just very quickly change what you're doing and it'll take you a few weeks or maybe even a few months just to put it together and then you can go and sell it right but that's actually one step closer than the goal that you actually should be at at least in my opinion so you don't really want to be doing that where you're just sort of creating services and then trying to sell them i very much believe and i have a lot of evidence and experience through this that you should be selling before you should be creating now this might mean to people that, you know, oh, I'm going to sell a service that I don't know how to, to complete, or I'm going to basically be lying to my prospects and saying, you know, I have this service and I can do this for you, and I don't really know how to do it, but that's not the case. And don't get me wrong, the service that you sell, the service that you have, the delivery of that service is still important. It still needs to be at least at a decent level, because if it isn't, then your reputation is very quickly going to go down the drain, and you're not going to be able to sell to clients because everyone knows that your service isn't good, and you're going to have no testimonials no case studies and you've been doing this for a little while so when you tell your prospects have been doing this for six months and you don't have one positive review and you can't talk about the positive experiences that you've had in your clients then it's not a good look and there's a key thing to know here a lot of people throw around product market fit right and but not many people actually know what that means and not many people know how to implement that into their business so product market fit by definition it doesn't mean a specific product. So we're not talking about, you know, drop shipping here or something that you would buy on Amazon. It could be a service product, could be a service, which is kind of complicated, but it means both. What it means is that the people that you are trying to sell it to, the market, let's say if you are trying to sell to real estate agents, actually want to buy your service. I'm sure if you were trying to sell, let's say, televisions to real estate agents, that wouldn't have any more positive correlation than if you would be selling anything to real estate agents because you don't need a television to be a real estate agent, right? But if you were selling, let's say, a certain type of software, right, that you could use to make yourself a better real estate agent, that's going to resonate more with that market, okay? And just because it resonates doesn't mean there's a product market fit. What it means is that you actually have a higher chance of selling it, okay? You know you have a product market fit when you can go out to these people, the real estate agents, the niche, whatever it is, the, the industry that you're targeting, and the vast majority of them would be interested in them and a significant portion of those would actually be willing to, to pay for it. Now, it doesn't need to be a service that every single person needs and it doesn't need to be something which is, you know, is, is incredibly, incredibly specific, but you need to know that the thing that you're selling is actually wanted by the people that you're aiming it at. And so once you have this product market fit, you know that this is the thing that you can sell. And the only way that you know this is by actually going and selling it to these people. Of course, you could do market research and stuff like that, but that is incredibly tedious, probably not something that you'd want to be doing. You then need to make sure that this can actually be profitable, okay? If, for example, you speak to real estate agents and they are saying that they only want to spend $100 a month on this and it's very, very difficult to acquire customers and clients for this service, this product that you have, let's say it's going to cost you, you know, maybe two hours of your time and $50 in actual expenditure, you need to weigh up if that's actually going to be worth your time. How long are you going to keep these people for? Are you going to keep them for 12 months? If so, then maybe it's profitable. But if they're only going to stick around for one month, then it's not going to be profitable. And so you have product market fit, but you don't have a business there. You have something, but it, it wouldn't actually work. And so a lot of people will spend time who are, you know, uh, trialing out go high level, right? They're creating automations. They are creating a funnel. Maybe they are, you know, creating uh, an idea of what their client adverts are going to look like. All this different stuff that's related to actually serving the client. 
but they haven't picked up the phone and done one cold call yet. They haven't spoke to anyone in that industry and said, hey, this is the service that I'm thinking about selling. Would you be interested in this? This is the offer that I have. I can get you this result. Would you be wanting to jump on a call and explore this further? If you're not getting that information and you don't know that, then you don't have a business. You're literally just creating a service that you have no idea if someone wants to pay for it or not. And if you go down the route of, I'm gonna create my service first and I'm gonna sell second, then you're basically just wasting your time. Sales is the number one thing when it comes to business. And so if you are actually improving your sales skills, going out there, marketing your business, marketing your product, your service, trying to sell to these people, there is literally zero, zero negative in doing that. You're always gonna get some kind of benefit, whether it's experience from selling, whether it's gains in confidence, whatever it may be. But if you spend your time creating a service or developing a product that you have no idea if the people that you're trying to market it to would be interested in it, then you are wasting your time. And now the thing that a lot of people might be, you know, thinking now is that, okay, I'm gonna sell this service and I'm gonna sign like three or four clients from this, okay. But then what, right? I've just told them that I can get them 10 appointments. I've told them that I can get them this many leads in the next month. What do I do then? You have to realize that every single problem can be solved and it will be solved. If people are giving you money and they are giving you a, a, a livelihood that you can build a business off the fact that people are gonna give you $500, $1,000 a month, whatever it may be, you, you better bet that you are going to work and do everything that you can to solve this problem. And every single problem can be solved. I've seen craziest of craziest things in my time in business where I've been you know, developing a product or we have an issue with something where you know the clients aren't getting the, the results that they want or the use of the leads that they want, whatever it may be, and we can actually go and fix this. We can solve this problem. And if you had told me two months ago that this would have been the solution and we actually did solve it, I never ever would have believed you. And so you always have to think a little bit outside the box when it comes to this. Just knowing that there isn't a problem out there that can't be solved by you, then it's gonna put you in a, in a great place to actually go and sell these services and, and get the kind of business that you want. So I was talking to this prospect today, like I was saying, and this is the reason I had the idea. And he was telling me, you know, that he's not really too sure about the business and stuff like that. And he's not really sure if it's gonna work, the service that he wants, he hasn't really tested it out before. And so, you know, he wasn't really too interested in, in working with us, right? And he basically saying that he needs to test the service out because he can't go and generate all these appointments and have these clients coming in if he doesn't know that the service is working. And this is a guy who hasn't signed a lot of clients in the past, right? I don't think he has a, a tremendous amount of experience. And the basically point that I was making is like, he has no idea if this service, first of all, is actually gonna sell because he hasn't really done it. He doesn't have like a, a tremendous amount of clients. I know for a fact that it would sell because I've, I've sold him the niche that he was operating in and I've sold that service before, the specific service. And so I knew that it would work, right? Uh, but the issue that he has is that he's going to sort of create a service and try to sort of emulate advertising and marketing for these businesses without actually signing any clients. And so he has like no, no inputs of, you know, meetings and appointments into his business. So he basically has no cash coming in. There's, there's no sort of river flowing through that business. And so he can sort of, you know, put the, the barriers up around this river and sort of build the river. And, you know, maybe he's gonna put some things in there to make it look nice and have some kind of effect. And it's gonna make the river really great. But if there's no water flowing through this river, then you don't have a river. You just have this, this this bed of things and then maybe there's some decorations on the side right and so what i was basically making the point to him is that you can build this thing that is a business but if you're not serving customers if you're not solving problems if you're not impacting people's lives then you don't have a business and so you need to first of all understand that you can sell to these people and this is actual possibility because I said that every problem could be solved, but one problem that can't be solved is if someone actually doesn't want your service. If you're trying to sell, you know, snow to the Eskimos, if you're trying to sell, you know, grass to the cows, whatever it may be that's your analogy that you want to use, if you just can't sell to those people because they have too much of it and they don't want it, then the business isn't going to work. It's just, it's just, it's just as simple as that. And I know this might sound like completely obvious and just painstakingly true, but many people don't position their business in that way and they just think generically that, everyone is gonna want my service. And that, you know, this group of people, there'll be someone out there that wants it. But I'm telling you now, there's many different services that I've seen. And even a few people that have jumped on calls with myself and said, you know, this is the business that I have. I don't have so many clients right now. And I think, you know, that's that's probably not gonna work, especially when it comes to a business sense, like making money from this. I don't think people would actually want it, let alone actually spending that kind of money. But if you do have a service that is actually, you know, you know that people are gonna buy it. Let's say it's been done a million times before. How do we actually go and do this, right? Because if we do this model that I'm that I'm telling you to do right now, and you go out and you sign five clients and you don't know how to actually fulfill on the service, then you might be thinking like, 
oh my God, what am I doing here? But if you have a service that many people have done before, let's say a marketing agency, for example, then there's many different ways that you can go and actually emulate different services so that you can have a very, very good service from the first day that you are launching with your clients. There's a bit of a famous technique or a popular technique uh, called funnel hacking, right? And basically, you can do this for sort of any service or any business. If the service is public, which most of them will be because they will have funnels, they will have adverts that are out there, they want to attract people, you can sign up for those adverts, you can sign up for those funnels and you can see what kind of messages you get. What kind of journey are they sending their clients and their customers on? And so when you sign up for these, you can obviously make a note of what kind of text you're getting, what kind of emails you're getting, how the wording is done, what the creatives on the adverts are like, all this kind of stuff. Because of how advertising works, if they are targeting um, you know, plumbers in Miami, right? And you're targeting plumbers and they have this this client that's in Miami and they're working with this client. You see this advert, right? You see their funnel and you can go through their funnel and you can sign up and all that kind of stuff and see what information is out there and what information they give you and what text they send you and all that kind of stuff. And then when you go and sign your client in Canada, right? You go and sign your client in LA, whatever it may be, you can then use that same system and no one is gonna know that you've ever done this because people aren't going to be actively looking for that advert because you can't just go and like stumble across it. They would actually have to be going looking for it and no one's really going to be doing that. And the chance that someone comes across this very, very small plumber from LA and they also come across this very, very small plumber from Miami is, is very, very low. And so I've done it many times when I've been running adverts and we literally just funnel hack someone and we know that it's working. And one way that we know that it's working is on the Facebook ads library, for example, there will be a date when the advert actually went live. And so if the advert has only been up for like two days, then I probably wouldn't mess with that and I wouldn't touch that simply because we don't know how successful that's been. But if the advert has been up for six months, even a few weeks, to be honest with you, then it's probably good enough to actually go out there because they wouldn't have let that run for two, three, four weeks, whatever it is, if it wasn't actually generating them cash. If they were doing that, then that is terrible, terrible business. So you know for pretty certainty that this advert is actually working and getting this business results. And so I would be I'd be looking to copy those at that point. And if you have a service that it is not a, a given what the service is gonna be, you know, this isn't done thousands of times, it's a little bit more out there, a little bit more revolutionary, let's say, then it's gonna be easier to sell at this point, right? It's gonna, you're gonna have more clients, you're gonna be able to sell for maybe a little bit of a higher ticket because no one's seen this before, as long as you have that product market fit, okay? But then you need to make sure that after actually solve this problem, you are testing and testing and testing like no tomorrow. You are doing everything that you can to find something new, changing the copy, changing the way that you, you know, uh, do your SMS targeting, whatever it may be. You need to just go out and try every little thing and start to log all the details. Okay, so when we tried this, this happened, let's tweak one thing, then let's see if they made a difference there, right? And you can do this again and again and again. The first client that you have with this service won't be successful and you kind of need to accept that. So I would always work on like a paper appointment basis or something like that. Have some kind of guarantee in there so you basically don't feel like you're ripping people off because obviously you're testing things out and stuff like that. But when you find something that actually is working a little bit better than the next thing, then you have a base and then you can tweak that, see if that works a little bit better and then you can go from there. And this is really how every single marketing agency started from like the very, very beginning. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know how to actually serve these clients, but they knew that they wanted to basically solve this problem. And the way they solved the problem was by testing and testing and testing. And the only way that you can actually do this is by having this repetition of clients. And the only way you can have this repetition of clients and clients coming in very regularly is to sell, to have appointments coming in, to do outreach, to get people through the door and know who you are. And that should really be your number one goal every single day when you are in business. I see people that, that pause their outreach and I just think like that they, they have no idea what's coming to them because the way that if you just pause your outreach today, you're still gonna have appointments in tomorrow. Your, your, your emails are still gonna get responses tomorrow because your emails have already gone out today. You might even get responses the day after. You probably will get the responses the day after that. But then they'll stop. And then when they stop, you say, okay, now we're gonna turn the emails on. And then it takes a few days to start getting back up, right? The follow-ups have to start kicking in slowly. And so that's kind of the way that it works. And so, yeah, I would never ever stop the outreach. And so it's just all about getting these appointments in, closing deals. And I hope, I hope that I have convinced you because it is the number one thing that you need to be doing in your business. If you are looking for clients, someone to sign these clients for you, bring these appointments in for you, click the first link in the description. No one's asking for your email or your phone number or anything like that. It's literally just a video of myself, literally sat in this very chair explaining what we do and how it works. But yeah, you don't have to click it, of course. I don't really care if you do or not. If you wanna just watch this content, then that is completely fine. But like the video, if you did like the video and comment if you want me to cover anything specific that you would be interested in and then subscribe if you wanna see more. But yeah, thank you and I appreciate you watching this one to the end. Cheers.